I do a lot of investing in startups. Yeah, I do a lot of, I only do very early stage investing. It's the only thing that really interests me. How innovation, entrepreneurship, or risk taking, for me, in my career, was never really a choice, but, but the default. It was the only option I had. There's like, there's only two kinds of people in this world, those who doubt themselves and liars. YouTube is an outlet for my creativity. I want people to respond to the creativity. Welcome everybody, good morning. We are here in Basel where we are attending the Swiss Innovation Forum, which is very exciting. Over a thousand people coming today to talk about the latest innovation in Switzerland. And one of the speakers is Casey Neistat, who we are going to meet today. And I'm very excited, a big role model of both of us, and uh, we are excited to see him. talk to you guys about this morning um, is how innovation, entrepreneurship, or risk taking for me in my career was never really a choice, but, but the default. It was the only option I had. And when I was younger, when I was finding my career, whether it was as a software developer with my technology company or as a filmmaker or in television or on YouTube, um, it was always something that I, it was something that I had to do. I never had another option. The advice I always give people when they're asking me, I want to give up, how do I not quit? Is I say to them, frankly, like, well, what's the other option? You either keep going or what? You surrender? And if you surrender, if you just give up, maybe your heart wasn't in it in the first place. And you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have done it. I think that it requires a kind of conviction to succeed in the world of entrepreneurship. A kind of conviction that is like, means you don't give up. Failing is okay. Failing is not the same as giving up. Failing is just a, a stumble. So how do you know whether you're failing or you have to give up? Well, you never give up. <laughs> and I think you fail and you fail and you fail again, and then eventually you'll find success. And then when you find success, all those failures you learn were just another step to get you towards that success. Giving up is turning around and walking in the other direction. Right. Giving up ensures you'll never succeed. Failure is a, is a wonderful, necessary part of finding success. Quitting is not. There's, like, there's only two kinds of people in this world, those who doubt themselves and liars. Because um, we all have doubts. We all have doubts in our pursuits and our, um, when chasing our own ambitions. Um, how I did it was, you know, I, I largely looked to my children. And I think like, you know, does my kid want to grow up and see his dad as, as a loser or a quitter? Or someone who stopped at nothing to, to realize his own pursuits? And that was a big motivating force for me. I vividly remember moving to New York City um, when I was very young. I remember being in New York City on September 11th, 2001. I had been living there for three months. I had had nothing. I had no place to live and all of a sudden, literally buildings are falling down and I don't have a job and I've got nothing. Um, and I had every reason to throw in the towel then. I would rather have assumed the risk of the unknown than to take the safe path, which would have left me with a lifetime of maybe regret, or at least, uh, um, you know, a, a, a kind of regret that, that I'll never be able to change. Focus is my greatest weakness. Um, I've never been able to focus. I, I think they tried to medicate me when I was young to get me to focus. I've never been able to focus. And that's been virtuous in the fact that it's meant I've never stood still and I've always tried new things. And a lot of those new things ended up being a much bigger part of who I am personally and professionally. You can do 10 things really poorly or one thing really well. Often in life, in order to accomplish more, you have to do less. And that's a place I'm trying to find. Um, I think one of the burdens of success is opportunity. And I think that um, you can drown in a tidal wave of opportunity if you're so lucky to be in that position. Knowing which of those opportunities to pursue and which of the ones to say no to is a huge part of continuing that success. 
YouTube Studio, the app, it gives you all the analytics and all that. I never open it, huh. ever. I never look at it. But I function on YouTube very differently from most. YouTube is an outlet for my creativity. I want people to respond to the creativity. The, the moment I'm adjusting my creativity to better meet those metrics is the moment that I failed. So uh, again, this sort of dovetails with what we were talking about earlier, which is like, you really do have to pave your own way. And I think that for a creative individual to try to appropriate their creativity to best work with metrics, that's probably a bad recipe. Yes. But if your content is about something else, if you're trying to create a business show that you want that show to connect with the business audience, you better pay attention. If people aren't watching, there's a reason. And you can change that. I do a lot of investing in startups, yeah, I do a lot of, I only do very early stage investing, it's the only thing that really interests me. I do a lot of investing in startups, um, one of the, I would say one of the greatest benefits of having built a startup is getting to know that community, and now that community has presented me with opportunities for investment and I do that. Uh, 368, a company that I, start, I started and founded with um, my partner Paul Lays, that entire company was about enabling other creators. Um, and I work with creators personally as well. Anytime I find somebody that I think is great, who hasn't found their audience, call them, I connect with them, I do what I can to try to elevate them. Um, the community of YouTube is one of the big reasons why I'm so passionate about YouTube. So anything I can do to help bolster that, I, I lean into. I only look at the individuals. I only invest in people. I'm not smart enough to understand business or the business to invest in businesses. That's why I only do really early stage, because I can look at a person and be like, to the best of my understanding, this is a successful person. And even if they fail this in this company that I'm investing in, this person's gonna succeed in the future and this is a relationship I wanna have. And those are the investments that I make. Um, so yeah, I, I only look at people. And I'd like to say it's for some bigger reason, but the truth is no, it's my own naivety and not understanding the industry enough. But I think I can understand people enough to know whether someone is uh, someone who is committed to finding success or, or maybe not. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that was an exciting moment when I got to meet Casey Neistat for the first time. I think he was the first YouTuber that has a really big audience that I got to meet, uh, which is also something that I don't experience too often. Yeah, now a couple of more meetings here in Basel, back to Zurich, and thank you so much for watching. And Casey, if you see this, thank you so much for taking the time. Have a great day. My key takeaway from meeting with Casey Neistat is that we all have to aim for success, but sometimes we have doubts and sometimes we fail and that's okay. And most importantly, that's the living example of Casey Neistat. Once you are successful, you have to stay humble and authentic. That's what I learned.